Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 video. So today I thought I would do a Q&A video going over the most common questions that I've got on Twitter and in the comments section of my YouTube videos about the 11.0 PS4 jailbreak. So let's go ahead and dive straight into it here with the first question. This is the one I've seen the most and that is of course relating to the success rate. Uh, why do so many people have issues? A lot of people getting stuck at 93% when trying to load the exploit. So obviously we're still in the early stages of this jailbreak, so there's still some jankiness involved and we don't really know exactly why certain consoles or certain computers have trouble actually loading the jailbreak right now. So I do have a few recommendations to try and help you get a better stability. So to begin with, you need to make sure that you don't have any device between the computer and the PS4. So you need to make sure that you don't have like a switch, a network switch in between you just need to have the ethernet cable connected directly between the PS4 and the computer in order to get it to work. So that is one thing. Uh, the second thing is that Linux is much more stable and initially the script was developed on Linux and it was meant for Linux. It was only ported to Windows a little while afterwards. And generally Linux is a lot more stable when running the exploit. So I do have a tutorial, my first tutorial on how to actually load the jailbreak covers how to set it up in a Linux virtual machine. So I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I'll leave it linked below. And if you set it up that way, you should have better chances of success when loading the jailbreak, especially if you're somebody on Windows who is trying like, you know, a hundred plus times and you're still not able to get it loaded, then Linux is definitely something that's worth trying. You can just follow that video up to the point where you run the script. And before you run the script, you just want to swap out the stage2.bin file inside the stage2 folder with the one from Sistro for Gold Hen and rename it to stage2.bin. Run the script and you should be good to go. So that is another thing I would recommend. Now, in terms of some of the issues that you run into, you know, when you try and load the exploit, if it actually does load and you get the PPPWN message that pops up in the top left hand corner, but you don't then get the gold hen message that should pop up afterwards. That usually happens because the USB drive, the payload, the gold hen payload is not being detected on either the internal hard drive of the PS4 or the USB stick. So there may be a problem with your USB stick where you might have to try a different one, or maybe you've renamed the file. The file needs to be called goldhen.bin. Do not rename the file. And it needs to be copied to the root of a USB drive that's in XFAT or FAT32 format. I'd, al I'd also recommend not having other USB devices connected to the PS4 when you're trying to load the exploit. So those are a few things you can try there. If you're running it and it's crashing the console every single time, a lot of the time that might be caused by a mismatched stage 2 payload. You have to bear in mind that you have to use the one from Sistro to load Gold Hen. Lightning Mods has released stage 2 payload loaders as well but they're not compatible with Gold Hen for version 11. So if you're using Lightning Mod's payload loader with Sistro's Gold Hen for 11.0, then you're going to run into those crashing problems. So make sure you're using Sistro's uh, stage2.bin file, which you will find in the Gold Hen 7-zip file that contains the Gold Hen.bin. It's also got a folder for uh, PPPWN stage2, which has the 11.0 and 9.00 uh, stage2 loaders. And of course, you want to make sure you're using the one for 11.0. So those are all of the main things that I can recommend right now. Now, in terms of other devices, there's a lot of questions about other devices. Obviously, we have the Raspberry Pi method. Uh, so far, that's been pretty stable for me on my Raspberry Pi 4. Should perform a little bit better on the Raspberry Pi 5. I have heard that some people are having issues on older Raspberry Pis, like Raspberry Pi 2s, Raspberry Pi 3s. The problem with that is that those devices... Um, are less powerful and they're having trouble running the script where it gets stuck and you have to reset the Raspberry Pi to get it to work again and it can take a lot longer between each attempt. Uh, this is just a problem we have with the script running using Python at the moment. Uh, if we can get a working rewrite in C or C++ and there is a project at the moment that is working on doing that. Okay so as I was looking up this project for this video it looks like it's complete. It was originally work in progress and I was going to say that, you know, hopefully it will be complete at some point and we'll be able to see a difference. But it looks like it's complete already. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be testing this very soon to see how much faster it is on Windows, as well as, of course, on Raspberry Pis. And this could actually allow, you know, these older, uh, less powerful Raspberry Pis to run the exploit more reliably and a lot quicker as well between each attempt. 
So yeah, this could actually make a pretty big difference here. And it could also allow us to run it on other low powered devices like routers and maybe other Arduino style boards. So uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned because this is looking very promising. And of course, Android is another popular one that people want to run the script on so that they can use their phone to run the jailbreak. So there actually is a project for this already, which I'll leave linked down in the video description. The project is by Darklife944, and it does require a rooted Android phone, unfortunately. But if you do have a rooted Android device, you can try running this and actually load the jailbreak from your Android device. You will need a USB-C to a ethernet adapter so that you can connect the ethernet cable to your phone because it does not work over wi-fi so that is something that you'll have to do um, if you are setting things up that way but yes an android version is available so some of the most common questions are about updating your firmware so if you're on a previous jailbreak should you update to 11.0 i would say categorically no there is absolutely no benefit right now to updating from a previous jailbreak like 9.00, 5.05, 6.72 to 11.0 because you're already on a very stable jailbreak, a very mature jailbreak that's had a lot of support. A lot of work has gone into getting that jailbreak to run um, as stable as possible. You know, you already have all of the homebrew support and the payload support. So there really isn't a whole lot of reasons to update to a higher firmware, especially when all of the latest games you can pretty much run on an older firmware like 9.00 anyway, thanks to all of the back ports. So yeah, there really isn't much of a reason to update to 11.0. You would just be, you know, swapping out a stable jailbreak for an unstable jailbreak right now. So yeah, definitely not recommended. So beyond that, what about updating from a firmware that is not already jailbreakable, like 9.03, 9.60, 10.01, 10.70, you know, if you're on any of those firmwares where you don't have the jailbreak yet, but obviously the, obviously the exploit works on your firmware, should you wait for your firmware to get support or should you just update to 11.0? Now, in my opinion, I would just update to 11.0 because that is the latest firmware and the latest firmware always gets the most support. That's the firmware all of the developers are going to be on. That's the firmware that's going to get priority. Uh, there really isn't that much of a priority to port it to older firmwares uh, when you can just update from an older firmware to 11.0 to get support. Now, obviously, there are some people that are stuck on an older firmware because they have a broken Blu-ray drive, for example, and they can't update to 11.0. In that case, eventually, you should get access to the no Blu-ray drive updater, which will hopefully get support for your firmware. So the no Blu-ray drive updater just uses the exploit to allow you to update your firmware, even if you have a broken Blu-ray drive. So you'll just have to wait for that to come out and then you'll be able to update to 11.0. Now there is one caveat where up to 9.60 there does exist a WebKit exploit, the PS3 WebKit exploit that works up to that firmware. So some people are going to want to stay on those older firmwares in the hope that maybe this uh, kernel exploit that we're using with uh, PPPWN uh, is going to be able to be triggered from that WebKit exploit and then it might get more stable or maybe a new kernel exploit will come out that can be chained with that WebKit exploit to get a better jailbreak. And generally, um, if you want to wait for that, you can. I generally wouldn't bother. We already have a jailbreak on 11.0, so you might as well take advantage of it when you can, as early as possible. But yeah, I mean, you can wait if you want, but you know, most of the time, new kernel exploits that are being developed are being developed for higher firmwares. A lot of the exploit developers are not going to bother trying to make a new kernel exploit for a firmware that's already jailbreakable. Uh, they're going to look at, you know, a higher firmware to try and jailbreak. So that's why I don't really, you know, expect that to happen unless this current kernel exploit can be chained with it. But it doesn't look like it can be triggered with WebKit so far. So I really wouldn't bother staying on 9.60 myself. But, you know, if you want to do that, you absolutely can. Uh, but in most cases, I would say update to 11.0 unless of course you're on a previous jailbreak. Okay, so final question about firmwares. What about 11.02 and 11.50? Of course, if you've updated to 11.02 or 11.50, you cannot access this jailbreak. The jailbreak was patched in 11.02 and higher. So you'll have to wait for a new jailbreak to come out for your firmware. And that could be months or potentially years as the last jailbreak was 9.00 and it took two and a half years to get this new 11.0 jailbreak, which is unfortunate. But yeah, you'll have to wait potentially a long time until you get the jailbreak. Now, there is something called the revert method, which might apply to 
people who are on 11.02, uh, where there is a method to actually revert to the previously installed firmware, where you can basically revert from 11.02 back to 11.0 or lower. However, it's quite an involved process. It involves a lot of soldering stuff, uh, you know, reading and writing to certain chips on the motherboard. If you're comfortable with that kind of stuff, you can look into that method. I do have a full tutorial that covers how to do the revert method so that you could revert back to 11.0 or lower and access the jailbreak. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not going to apply to most people. Maybe if you have a PS4 repair shop somewhere near you that you can send your console into and they can do the revert for you, uh, that would be a possibility. But for most people, um, it's not really that viable of a solution. But uh, if you're interested in it, I will leave the tutorial link down in the video description. Okay, so moving on to the next question, what about having to use a USB for Gold Hen? Is there any way we could load Gold Hen without requiring the USB drive? Well, of course, the USB drive is only required for the first time that you're actually launching Gold Hen, at which point it's copied to the internal hard drive, and then it can be loaded from there in future. So the USB drive is only required for the first time that you launch the exploit, which really isn't that big of a deal in my opinion. Um, however, some people are obviously don't like that for whatever reason. So we may potentially see in future a modified stage two payload that will allow you to send the gold hen payload over the network instead of you know putting it on the root of a USB. That might be a solution in the future. The problem right now is that we can't just use like a stage two payload as a way of loading gold hen just as a stage two payload because there is some kind of size uh, limitation with how much data you can have as the stage two payload and therefore you know you can't actually just have the stage two payload be gold hen it has to load gold hen from a usb drive so the stage two is just the loader and it loads gold hen from the usb or the hard drive so that's just the way it is at the moment now for loading additional payloads though and this is the other question uh, what about loading additional payloads? Do you have to put it put more payloads on the USB? You know, you have to swap out the gold hen payload. If I want to run the, you know, the game dumper, for example, I have to swap out the gold hen payload on the USB and load it. That's actually not required. We actually have a, a bin loader server built into gold hen. If you go into the gold hen settings and you go to the server settings, you can enable the bin loader server and it will listen on port 9090 and it supports TCP and HTTP post mode. So there's two different ways that you can send payloads over the network. So with TCP, you can basically, if we switch over to my computer here, I can use a program like Netcat GUI, where I can just enter the IP address of the PS4 and the port number 9090, and I can drag a payload like this disable updates payload, for example, into the program. And then I can just send it over the network to the PS4. And you can see there, we get the message that the payload was received from the IP address of my computer and then it loads the disable updates payload. And what's even better about this is the HTTP post mode uh, is going to be even better because we'll be able to load payloads just like we did on older jailbreaks by using the web browser. So if you go onto the web browser right now, you can head to the website kmeps4.site forward slash pppwn. Chameleon has set up a page for loading payloads on 11.0 using the HTTP post method. And this will allow you to load these additional payloads like the uh, the app dumper, disable updates, FTP, two decks, permanent UART, and the kernel module dumper. And any additional payloads will be added in here as well. And you'll be able to load them once they're updated for 11.0. So we can select like the disable updates payload and we get the payload received from local host and then disabled updates. So this is a way that you can run additional payloads. So you don't have to put them on the USB drive to load them with the exploit you can just load gold hen as normal from the internal hard drive and then use the bin loader server to load any additional payloads using a website like this. So that makes things a lot easier, but there are a couple of payloads, a handful of payloads that cannot be loaded using the bin loader server. I believe the kind of Mira loader and the Linux payloads, I don't think can be loaded through the bin loader server. So there may have to be some other solution figured out there, or we, or we might just have to load those particular payloads off a USB drive like we did with Gold Hen initially. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll wait and see what happens there. So the final question is, can you access PlayStation Network? Unfortunately, no, none of the PS4 jailbreaks allow for accessing PSN because we're on an older firmware and you need to be on the latest firmware to access PSN. So unfortunately, we do not have access to PSN. This is basically an offline experience. 
Now, there are some ways that you can play online. You've got, for example, the Easy FN server for Fortnite, which is a private server for Fortnite that you can play on your jailbroken PS4 and access, you know, online games with other people. And of course, there's services like Excellent Kai and Hamachi, which can allow you to broadcast your LAN connection to play with, you know, a couple of your friends, for example. So there are a few ways that you can play online, quote unquote, but it's obviously nothing like PSN. It's not anything like the PSN experience. So yeah, for the most part, it is essentially an offline experience. So anyway, that is it for the FAQ. Obviously, there are some other things that people are asking, but for some of these things, I'm going to have dedicated videos on. You know, we'll be covering that in future videos along with homebrew applications and many other things. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.